can't vote or get a job. What so I just say? We don't know what the next iteration of this will be, but it will be. It will be. And we will have to be vigilant. I'm a prison cell, six by nine, living hell, stone wall, metal balls for the guards in jail. My nickname, the can, the slam of the big house. All right, how many people live in the projects? All right, is the projects, does the projects look like a prison? Yeah. Minus the bars and the dogs and the guards, right? Yeah. So if you've been living in the projects for 20 years, is you scared of prison? No. You ready to go, ain't you? Because yeah. you want to get your big boy draws on, don't you? You feel me? Mm -hmm. You have to make that mark. But that's how they, they look at it like the projects is a, is a social experiment where they desensitize you so you is ready to go to jail. You feel me? You don't see no projects in the white community, do you? No. You see condos in the white community, right? Tell you something. Go ahead. I'm in place many fear because there's no way out. Yeah. 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 See that? White man. See the numbers? Which no one in 17. So there's three of y'all in here. Which one is not going to jail? That's remember that. Look at the numbers, baby. Black men account for roughly six and a half percent of the US population. They make up 40.2% of the prison population. 40%? Look at the numbers, baby. That's slavery. Now have more African Americans under criminal supervision than all the slaves back in the 1850s. The prison industrial complex uh, uh, relies historically on the inheritances of slavery. Stop. Stop right there. Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude within the United States shall exist. They wrote the 13th Amendment to re-enslave black people because when they freed all these black people in the 1800s, they had to do something with them. So you had little Jim Crow laws like stop and frisk. You had, you know what I'm saying, zero tolerance. It was called uh, loitering. It was called panhandling or whatever, you feel me? And then they would re-enslave you. And they would give you X amount of years for small crimes. You stole a loaf of bread the, the blow for bread only cost you 10 cents, but you gave me 40 years. So what did you do? You re-enslaved me under the 13th Amendment. And it says, no involuntary, sir. I've seen a video like this. Go ahead. Finish it up. Go ahead. For the two, a second also have been duly convicted of a crime. So once you've been convicted of a crime, you're in essence a slave of the state. Property. The you stroke of a pen is not self-enforcing. And so while the 13th Amendment is hailed as this great milestone for freedom and abolitionists celebrate, and you know, this is the end of a lifelong quest, the reality is much more problematic. Well, once that clause is inserted in there, it becomes a tool. It's there, it's embedded in the structure. And for those who seek to use this criminality clause as a tool, it can, it can become a pretty powerful one because it's privileged. It's in the constitution, it's the supreme law of the land. Throughout American history, African Americans have repeatedly been controlled through systems of racial and social control that appear to die, but then are reborn in new form tailored to the needs and constraints of the time. You know, after the collapse of, All right. of the old Jim Crow, and a new system has been born again in America, a system of mass incarceration that once Hold again it. strips millions we traded the penitentiary for the plantation, cotton for cocaine, and black people in America is still a cash crop. We've written our senators, our congressmen, and our public officials. It went uh, city, county, state, and federal levels. They created this system of failure for the black community, and now they're stuck with this, what they created, and they're trying to find a way out. You feel me? Yeah. So making this movie, it exposes it, but nobody want to take responsibility for it. So what I did is... I named the people that's responsible for it. And I gave all that information to Governor Hogan to see what he gonna do with it. I make everything I do live. So it ain't no misunderstandings and it ain't cut and it ain't edited, it's raw. Go ahead. Of poor people, overwhelmingly poor people of color, of the very right supposedly won in the civil rights movement. And so instead of talking about it, uh, we just tried to move on after the Civil Rights Act was passed, after the Civil Rights laws, we tried to play it off. Because we didn't deal with it then, the narrative of racial differences continued. And it turned into this presumption of dangerousness and guilt. 
that follows every black and brown person wherever they are. During the riots, they call it an uprising, but there wasn't an uprising. All they did was just show their military force. They treat us no different than we living in Beirut, Iraq, and Iran, you know what I'm saying? Because they militarize the police forces in our black communities. You feel me? And that's what they're doing. So when they throw this on you, they're going to put it on you. Go ahead. Ferguson was not simply about Mike Brown. It was also this pattern of mass criminalization and mass incarceration. Stop. There was an average of three warrants per household. That was three warrants per household in Ferguson, all right? That was before Mike Brown. When Mike Brown was murdered, we had uprisings, riots, but you only locked up the black people and you let the man that killed that man that created the situation free. The same thing with Tyrone West, Anthony Anderson, Freddie Gray, you got a mass genocide of black people at the hands of police and the police aren't held accountable. And then when we react to that unaccountability, we're victimized. You re-victimizing us twice. And so people rose up because they understood that they were also enemies of the state, seen as enemies of the state. The communities in which black people live or really become occupied territories and black people have become seen as um, enemy combatants, right? Who don't have any rights and who can be. Every time you turn the news on Fox 45, WJZ, WBAL, News at 11, you show them black men that are, you're trying to demonize black men. You're trying to instill that, reinstill that fear that you've been doing for 400 years. You know what I'm saying? So now you've given a leeway through your media and mainstream media to, to keep and continue this struggle that we're going on. Be stopped and frisked and, you know, arrested and detained and questioned and killed with impunity. We were to look at the largest scale riots that we know of uh, in you know, recent history from Rodney King to the Detroit riot in 1967, Newark riot in 1967, Phew. Harlem riot in 1964, Watts in 1964. Now when you had these riots in the 60s, I'm a 50s baby, uh, Martin Luther King got killed, uh, Malcolm X, uh, the Black Panthers, you know what I'm saying? They were killing off our black leadership and then when they was killing, us, killing them off, they was also incarcerating us, you know what I'm saying? We got the terrorist activity from, from white people like the Ku Klux Klan and the Aryan Nation, but you don't never see them locking them up. Hell's angels, you feel me? But you lock up a gang member, a blood, a crip, and a heartbeat. You feel me? The riots that they have them is the same thing that's going on now. Lack of employment, lack of jobs, housing, you know what I'm saying? The same thing, police brutality. It ain't changed, man. They just repackaged it. And y'all are victims of it. Go ahead. 1965, every single one of those riots was a result of police brutality. That is the common thread. It would be a mistake to say... And, and what are we doing now? Same thing, thing, right? That, oh, if you're against the police, then you're against law and order. These are hardworking civil... What are the police... Their lives on the line for you every day. And you what are the police here for? They're here to serve and protect. What do the police do in your community? Do they serve and protect you? No. What do they do in your community? Killing, threatening, and intimidating you, right? So how are we supposed to respond? They're not doing it in the white community. They're not doing it in Roland Park. You feel me? People who, who join the police do so, you know, to do these sorts of things. But if you dismiss black complaints of mistreatment by police as being completely rooted in our modern context, then you're missing the, the point completely. There has never been a period in our history where the law and order branch of the state has not operated against the freedoms, the liberties, the options, the choices that have been available for the black community, generally speaking. And to ignore that ratio. Now we go city, county, state, and federal levels. We talk about the dissent decree. We talk about 
the, the government officials and our elected officials, those are the ones that pass the laws that enslave our communities. You understand what I'm saying? So when they get elected every four years and they run for office every four years, you need to have your voices heard. You need to be heard, you feel me? Because those laws that are in place are affecting you. You understand? They're reinventing the 13th Amendment and they're doing it right in your face. You feel me? So Governor Hogan, this is from North County Public Schools. I got to cut this feed off, but you need to answer that letter. You need to respond. We need our rights protected. And we doing it under the 13th Amendment. We want access to the grand jury and the courts. We want due process and equal protections under the law. And I'm coming. 